How can you increase nitric oxide production? It's easy. I'm going to give you three ways. Number one is nose breathing, inhaling through the nose. Now, whether you exhale through the nose, I don't care. Inhale through the nose. That's the key. When you inhale through the nose, there's receptors on the inside of our nasal passageways that will actually increase nitric oxide production. Number two is zone two. Hey, that's convenient. Zone two exercise. Now, what the heck does this mean? This means when you're exercising, you're going to start exercising, progressively making it hard enough to the point where your heart rate gets up to a certain level and then you maintain it for that period of time. You don't go up, down, up, down. You don't do high intensity interval training. What you do is what's called zone two training. There's different zones that essentially are metabolic and they can measure what's happening. And the way to increase nitric oxide production is to go at this level. Now there's some ways to figure out if you're at the right zone when you exercise. And of course the phone is ringing now and now I have to wait. I try to do these videos in between patients or at lunchtime and the phone just rings, which is great for business, but sorry about that, we have to wait. I'm gonna tell you how to do this. So here's what you do. You either do walking, swimming, cycling, rowing, elliptical, it doesn't matter, your heart doesn't care. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start increasing your exercise. If you take 180 minus your age, so let's say you're 60 years old, 180 minus 60 is 120. You want your heart rate to be around-ish 120. When you're doing this, what you'll notice is you can talk, but it's a little bit labored. So like right now I'm talking, but as I'm talking, if I'm walking or riding a bike, this is where I can still continue to exercise, but I have to kind of, it's a little bit labored breathing, but you can carry on a conversation. If you're exercising like that, you're doing zone two training correctly. If you're huffing and puffing and you can't catch your breath, and you can't carry on a conversation, then you're simply working out too hard. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is from a nitric oxide production, the way I'm telling you how to do it is the way to increase that molecule. The third and final thing that you can do to increase nitric oxide production is to eat leafy green vegetables, which seems to me after I started YouTube, turns out to be like a four letter word. People don't want to eat leafy green vegetables because they're afraid of oxalates, because they're afraid that they're going to get kidney stones. Well, think of leafy green vegetables like peanuts. If you're allergic to peanuts, you shouldn't eat peanuts. You can stop breathing and die if you eat peanuts. But that doesn't mean peanuts are bad. It just means for that particular individual, peanuts are bad. The same thing with things like beets, spinach, kale, arugula, broccoli. When I recommend these foods to people, everybody's afraid, but I heard it's bad for your kidneys. Trust me, your kidneys are not bad because you're eating spinach and beets and broccoli. Your kidneys are bad for another reason. But I digress. These are the foods that you should be eating a lot of. And the reason why is because they have nitrates in them. And nitrates, our body converts into nitric oxide. If you don't supply the nutrients necessary, our body simply can't produce the molecule to dilate and relax our blood vessels. And that is how you do it. Three things to increase nitric oxide production. There's another one, here we go. Today's video sponsor is Mother Good Earth and they are a great company because they are first of all sponsoring this video and second of all they have the greatest minerals ever and they have a philosophy of minerals come from the earth so where do you get it from the earth and so watch what I'm gonna do here. We're just gonna go down, it rained the other day you just take a nice cup here and just scoop up some mud and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this mother earth with water and drink it to get all the minerals that come from the earth. So you could see I just mixed it with water and all the chunky goodness is in there. Beautiful for minerals. Mmm. Oh my God. 
Oh, oh, screw this. I don't need the money. No more sponsorship. Okay guys, good news. I have a new sponsor by Optimizers and they have Magnesium Breakthrough. This actually I do use. I take two tablets at nighttime. It helps me sleep. It's got seven different minerals. Now, of course, Mother Earth supplies minerals in the dirt, but it needs to come into the vegetables. And if the soil isn't good, if you're not eating organic vegetables, you're not getting as many minerals as you really should be. So that's why I take two tablets. It's got 500 milligrams of magnesium in it, and it's got seven different types of magnesium. I, the reason I take this is for a number of reasons. It regulates my blood pressure. It keeps my heart healthy, which is an endurance athlete I really want. And it helps me sleep. It's easy on the stomach, easy to digest, no digestive trouble, and this is actually a sponsor that I could stand by. Oh man, who's going to clean up these chunks?